thought I'd give you a quick rundown of just the overall flow of the machine and how it works. Um, I haven't really done that with this. It was something I intended to do a long time ago, but time gets away from you. So to start off with, you've got power coming in. Right now I have this hooked up to 120 volts. Um, just when I, because I was testing that noise issue and I wanted to divide and conquer and make sure power wasn't my issue. So I've got the 220 volts disconnected right now, but uh, that doesn't really matter. So on the back here, we've got what is normally two hot lines for the 220. So hot line, hot line, and the ground connection. And this over here is a terminal connection for the pump. It pulls one leg of the 220 and switches it. So you hook your pump up to here and here. Um, that's not technically correct. Um, I need to add a fourth wire, a neutral wire so that this ground wire isn't carrying current. Um, I don't know why I didn't think of that when I made this originally, but I didn't. So um, if I want to do it this way, which I'm not 100% set on, I would need to add a fourth wire to carry that neutral current for the 120 side, um, but that's for later. So coming in, the first thing that happens, um, the 220 volts comes in and hits a breaker right here. This is a, I believe an 80 amp breaker. Um, from there, it goes down to a 220 volt contactor. The contactor isolates the 220 volts from the inverter. So on the back side here, 220 volts is live right there when the breaker is on. The only thing that feeds is the ATX power supply and it also feeds 220 volts to the switching, um, to the switches over on the controller board, which feedback to the contactor itself because it's a 220 volt coil that activates the contactor and it also the one leg of the pump switch is is also fed back there so everything in the machine when you turn the breaker on is is activated is hot except for the inverter so I'm going to jump to that leg of the circuit right now this would normally be hooked to the contactor and that when when the contactor is activated 220 volts feeds into um, this which is a just a homemade high current line filter um, I'll eventually I haven't written that into the schematic yet but if you google line filters it's a pretty basic line filter you can probably by glancing at the topology there gather exactly what that's doing if you look at the basic line filter schematics so contactor feeds 220 volts into the line filter out the bottom of the line filter those red wires down there uh, feed into the three phase rectifier and from there it feeds the bus of the um, inverter so you've got 120 Hertz pulsed DC feeding into that inverter um, that works great um, it does a couple things I'm not gonna go really deep into that it's kind of beyond the scope of this basic explanation but um, by not filtering that DC um, you basically have a cleaner power, closer to unity power factor, 
So that's our DC bus voltage activated when the contactor is closed. We'll back back out to the control logic. Um, the main board, it does a lot. I'm not gonna go into everything there. Basically, it gives you the on-off functionality, starting and stopping the machine. Um, in manual modes, you can control the frequency rather than locking onto a resonant frequency and whatever other functions are programmed into the soft buttons and whatever is displayed on the, the screen. It also reads all the temperature data and uh, current data and every, every source of data is read and is being processed on this board with one chip. There are no, there's no host processor. It's all being done by the 1890 PWM316 Atmel chip. Um, the board is divided into a high voltage and low voltage, sec low voltage section. Um, the only connections from between the two are opto isolation and transformer for under over voltage lockout testing. So anyway, that's the main board. Uh, from there, the, there are a couple ribbon cables down towards the bottom that feed over to the hybrid drivers. Each of those hybrid drivers has um, ground, 12 volts, and two signals feeding into each driver board, input one, input two, and in both boards. Um, and there's also a fault line feeding out back to the processor. You can look at the uh, driver board data sheet to see what those signals mean exactly, but um, it's basically on and off times for the two different IGBTs in each IGBT brick. So in total there's four signals going into the inverter that make up the output of the inverter. Um, so those those signals are handled by the driver board. The fault signals are sent back to the main board if, if there are fault signals or if you have a noisy, bad environment or driver board. So the inverter processes those signals. I'm sorry, the driver boards process those signals and um, output the inverter signal. That inverter signal is fed into, um, into the primary of the matching transformer. Um, before it does that, there's a current transformer right here on one of the legs. And there's also, um, right now, a big capacitor in between just decoupling that, removing any DC component um, should, should there be uh, you know, a condition where this turns on and stays on, gets stuck on, which did happen in the early days before the good drivers. It kept, um, kept uh, from being a DC short there. Um, it's probably not needed anymore, but um, it's still in there for now. It doesn't really seem to affect the power level, um, and it does add a little bit of safety into that. So anyway, dumps into the primary of the matching transformer, which is the inside coil. Um, and I believe, I'd actually have to take this apart because I didn't write it down. I made so many of them, but I believe there's somewhere around 14 turns on the primary. And that primary is made from quarter inch copper tubing. Um, you can see I made some custom little uh, soldered on lugs onto the um, quarter inch tubing. That way the tubing could also be hooked up to water. And the tubings that are hooked up to the primary, um, there's extra length of um, coiled wire to add resistance 
to ensure that voltage doesn't get back from the primary coil through the rest of the water system. Um, the, the primary, I'm sorry, the matching transformer core itself is, uh, I believe it's a 3C85. I'll have to look at the data sheet again, but 3C85 or 3C90, one of those or similar materials. And it's actually two UI cores sitting side by side to form an EI core. Um, all of that is held together with um, some high voltage, high temperature tape and an aluminum bracket that wraps around the entire core and kind of holds it all together and bolts it down nice and solid. The secondary core, um, this is what made the biggest difference. Um, I had a lot of problem in the beginning with the secondary core getting too hot and literally boiling the water, no matter how fast it was flowing um, or anything. And at really high power levels, like above, above 10 kilowatts. Um, what I realized is I just needed more surface area on the second the secondary winding because there's so much current flowing through it so this secondary winding is actually um, there's a copper manifold that's soldered onto each side of each plate and out of that manifold comes four individual tubes which wrap around this the uh, outside of the primary windings so the secondary winding wraps around the outside of the primary winding and it's just a one turn um, winding, technically not even a full turn. Um, but that allowed for very high um, current draws and no cooling issues whatsoever. The whole transformer runs cool, including, including the core. Um, so the way this setup is done, the, there is no leakage that heats up any of the surrounding metal, including the ferrite core itself, because it's not, um, it's so big, it's not being saturated. So the tank itself right now is pretty simple. It's just made up of the secondary winding, which feeds into one side of the capacitor, and then on the other side, there is a insulator pad between the capacitor and the leg going out to the, to the work coil. So the path is secondary coil, capacitor, work coil, back around through to the secondary winding. So you can see the capacitor and the work coil are in series, not parallel in this setup. Um, this will run um, parallel if you change the topology and I have a couple setups like that and I'm not dead set on this topology yet but um, it is working really well so we'll see um, but that's the basic functionality of the whole circuit um, cooling is um, Pretty self-explanatory. I did set it up to where there's only one, there's one in and one out. Um, just looking at the backs of the machines, I really didn't like how most of them have multiple ins and outs and you have to deal with all that yourself with um, manifolds and T's and whatever. So I built basically a manifold, the same type of manifold that's on the um, secondary winding. Uh, it's just a copper tubing soldered shut at one end with four tubes coming out that are soldered together. Uh, I believe that's three-eighths inch copper tubing with quarter inch tubes soldered into it to make a four by manifold. So water comes in, checks the temperature right here, um, goes to all the constituent parts, comes back out, and it also checks the temperature again, so we're looking at water in temp and water out temp. 
which is pretty handy. Um, and inside to, to handle cooling the in, inside case, since the entire case is sealed, there are no air vents, no fans, no nothing. Um, there's a, a little uh, computer radiator fan right here, generally used for cooling water to feed back into something that needs cooled. But the way we're using this is it has a, a feed from the input directly going into the radiator and uh, a fan circulating air throughout the, throughout the case. So we're getting cool air circulating in the case from the water versus pulling dirty shop air into it and coating everything with a black, slimy, grimy, metalized dust. Um, the other places uh, we're checking temperature are down on the main board. There's another sensor right there, uh, just checking ambient temperature. And there's also one, you can't see it, but it's um, under the, it's, it's sandwiched between the inverter and the cooling plate with a little copper foil fin um, to monitor the inverter temperature. So, so we're monitoring internal ambient case temperature, inverter, cooling plate temperature, water input and water output temperature. Um, and we're also monitoring um, inverter current and mains current. So I think that's everything. Um, if anyone has any questions, feel free to ask in comments or on the website or on Patreon or Twitter or wherever else you can find me. Have a good day. See you later.